I think part of that is, is funding, because it's, it's frustrating having lots of ideas. And then thinking, okay, where are we going to get the money to, to do this? And so business improvement districts, which I think most of you have heard of, some of you will know something about, um, but so uh, you may not know how to create what, what I hope to do in the next five minutes or so. This is a little bit about what I do. Um, I'm a specialist in high street and town centre regeneration. I think there's a real need for this because the internet is its just the end of the beginning, I think, and in the next 10, 20, 30 years, I'm very fearful about what's going to happen to our high streets and town centres and for the reasons that Ben articulated so well about how important our high streets are in terms of a sense of community for people, um, it's going to be a very, very sad place. And I'll, if you spend any time in America, not on the coasts, but if you go to the middle in America, they've already been through this 30, 40 years ago. Um, Walmart, massive, massive retailing, big Tesco and St. Jude's are big. Walmart in the 80s, their incremental expansion in one year in the United States was more than Tesco and St. Jude's retail space combined existing. That's how big they are, how quickly they're expanding across middle America. And whole town centre just closed down overnight, and they killed it now, and it will probably never ever come back. It's really, really sad. I think the internet potentially has the same risk for our country. We love cheaper goods, lots of selection, but um, we're not going to have a community. And the biggest expression of community has to be face to face, meeting people uh, other than inside the car. So when Ben and I got together 18 months, 24 months ago, we tried to come up with uh, something sophisticated about what would a town team be, because this is the little. Um, alliteration that Mary Fultz came up with, town teams, though she pinched that idea from Yorkshire actually, mm -hmm. they were talking about town teams 10, 15 years ago. Um, and we came up with this little graphic, um, I'm not sure how good the, the colours are. <coughs> Business should be green and residents and public sector should be amber, but it's changed somehow. Um, if you try and organise to improve your town centre or your high street, if you try and get the landlords and developers together, you'll find it really hard because they don't live locally. Um, quite often they're investors from a long, long way away. So getting a face-to-face -face meeting, you can know, pick up the phone or respond to me, an email is really hard. Residents are certainly passionate and interested, but they don't really have that much money. And in this area, there's 24,000 of them, so speaking to them all directly is quite, quite tricky. The public and third sector, um, or the public sector at the moment has no money at all. It varies from council to council about how much use for us they have. In the good times, but in the bad times, you can't expect too much. So we decided that the businesses, the business occupiers, from Wilkinson's or Wilco's um, down to the smallest independent. Um, there are about 450 of them in the Bedminster area. If we could bring them together in a sensible way, um, create a partnership and a funding stream, not just for one year, but hopefully in perpetuity, that will be a useful thing to do. And uh, as I say, the business block should be agreed because for my money, it's much, much easier to get these groups organized um, uh, than the other groups. So we have this 100 grand and um, we agreed that we'd spend it as quickly as possible. The first three months, I think, we planned the whole project, and within nine months, we'd spent a lot. The reason we were quite confident about just spending it and getting on with it was because we had this business improvement district plan at the end of the first nine, 12 months. Whereas if you've heard stories from some of the town teams in other parts of the UK, quite a lot of them, I think some of them haven't even spent it yet. And uh, I think there's a certain urgency with high streets and town centres because it's on the internet. It's getting faster and harder. Um, some of you will know the Gloucester Road. Our local co-op, smallish co-op on the, uh, the Gloucester Road was refurbished two months ago. If you go in there, it looks good, but if you go up to the back, there's now a wall of lockers, of 40, 50 lockers, and there's an Amazon on them. So now you can go to one of the retailers on Gloucester Road, look at products with your smartphone. Amazon has now given you a barcode scanner. You can immediately scan it, get the price from Amazon, and the next day you can pick it up when you're picking up your milk in the co-op. How damaging is that going to be for comparison to retailers on the high street? Um, they're really taking over, so we've got to do something. What Simon was talking about, about creating an experience, I think that in one word, the experience or the environment, is the only platform on which high streets and town centres can compete with the internet. And so a lot of our thinking in this last 18 months has been about creating that experience, particularly through the arts. Um, Christmas lights, Ben Mitzel didn't have any Christmas lights. We've closed the roads a few times in North Street and in East Street. Um, we like the idea of pocket parks. If you've been to East Street recently, you'll see there's uh, a 
about eight or nine iterations of this. This is actually in America. I think that's a small work of art. I'm not sure if our uh, designer did quite as well as that, but they're very, very robust on East Street, and it makes it look a lot better. And the beautiful folks of Bedminster, you'll be hearing about shortly. And it was pretty good PR. We got through the help of Plaster, our uh, retained PR advisors that we spent a little bit of money on. Uh, we managed to get on national TV. And here about the bugs at length from uh, the person that brought them to us, Steve from up there shortly, so I won't dwell. Um, some other nice images, that's the, uh, the North Street Fair. Um, the Lantern Parade, uh, which comes out of West Street, is, is fantastic. Um, the town team put a little bit of money into that. <coughs> you here from Show of Strength, that's uh, this chap here. He's an actor. He's doing David Miliband there, isn't he, uh, Sheila? Um, <coughs> and we're going to hear a little bit from Sheila. And uh, Luke Jerram was actually a local artist. Um, piano is, what's he called the phrase? Blame me, I'm yours. Blame me, I'm yours. So obviously we wanted one of those. And uh, Luke's local, and uh, East Street has a piano in the summer. The business improvement district. So the town team, we had this 100 grand, we spent it pretty quickly, um, but we we're confident that we would replace that um, that uh, revenue stream with a business improvement district. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes just summarising how you create one of these. This image here is the front page of what's called the business improvement district uh, proposal. Um, it's basically like the executive summary, really, of the business plan, and um, we printed off. Um, a couple of thousand of those and sent them to businesses in advance of the ballot. And we have four or five core objectives, as you can see there, create vibrant streets that excite and delight, reduce the crime, um, drive, drive down business costs, market and promote Bedminster, and uh, lobby on behalf of Bedminster. Um, if we could get this off the ground, it would mean we'd have £85,000 for the town team um, each and every year for the next five years. Sort of something that we really wanted to happen. And we promise more the same or similar projects that we did, um, that we delivered in the first nine months of the town team. We also said we'd spend a lot of time um, looking at collective purchasing. If you bring a few hundred businesses together, those of you who've done the smallest amount of economics, um, there is something called economies of scale. So encouraging businesses to buy their waste or buy their electricity as a collective rather than as an individual business, puts them on a similar platform to maybe a Tesco or a Sainsbury's with the hundreds or thousands of stores that they represent. And we reckon we can save at least as much as the business would invest in the business improvement district. But in places like Ealing in London, quite mature business improvement districts, they now save their businesses twice as much as they actually put into the kitty. So the bid, what is it? Um, in, in the simplest terms, you, you draw a red line around, um, around a given area. Um, the locals will recognise this. For you, those of you not local, this is um, Bedminster. Um, Currently, uh, this end, you come along North Street, you get to East Street and West Street, and uh, up the top there, the big, big building, this is, uh, is Asda. So you draw right a line around the area, see how many businesses you've got, you get a few hundred businesses, um, you do lots of consultation, lots of conversations, and ask them what they want, and uh, try and get some consensus at the end of it. So um, we ask the businesses, could they agree on the idea of a series of improvements? And mostly it's about marketing and promotion and street beautification, etc. Um, then somebody's got to pay for all those things, no such thing as a free lunch, so pull it too. In, uh, in one sentence, the money comes out of a levy, and that levy is based on rateable value. So all commercial buildings, if you're not familiar with the business rates process, um, all commercial occupiers pay rates from this place to the shops and the Tesco's. The average independent business, 2% uh, of their rateable value, or 1.5%, yeah, 1.5% we did here, but in other places, 2%. Um, it's a couple hundred quid a year, so it's not a lot of money. It's a beer a week or a, a coffee a week, so it shouldn't be a huge issue for a lot of people. But if you multiply that couple hundred a week from one business by these 700 businesses, you get up to the 80, 85 grand a year that we or we could generate for Bedminster for the next five years. Um, a big point, and a big, a big resistance that businesses have saying, well, shouldn't the council be doing this? Um, well, you could wait for your local council to do these for the, for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And it's still a problem you want to do that. So, um, but there is clarity over what the council are doing and making sure that the council is suddenly done to start taking services away. They're called baseline agreements. And uh, so you, you, uh, you agree a series of uh, descriptors of what the council are already doing and make sure that what you're doing is additional to that. They don't take away any services that they should be providing. Um, I think in those three bullets, that's why any place with any town centre, any high street would require a business improvement district. 
It really encourages people to collaborate and work together. Um, they can reach a sense of consensus. And then, when you've got money, um, nothing more frustrating than having some good ideas and then having to spend the next 6, 12, 18 months going around um, dumping your cap and trying to get the money together. So now we're in the um, rather enjoyable position where we have board meetings, um, we talk about what we want to do, we make a spending decision and we know that we've got money in the bank. At the moment, Ben and Town team has over £60,000 in the bank. It's quite a nice position to be in. This is the other main question you get asked by businesses if you start talking about let's have a business improvement district and who's going to control it. Well, there's two broad ways in which it's controlled. On day one, you've got a business plan and that provides a framework for the next five years. So, so people know roughly where they're going if they're going to come into the idea of a business improvement district. But you don't want to be fixed for five years in terms of the project you're delivering. So um, you want to have some sort of organisation and usually it's a limited company and that limited company has a board of directors, it does not so usually, and those directors are elected on an annual basis by the members, the members of the businesses, should be members of businesses over the main in Bedminster, straightforward. The final point is, well, who decides you can go ahead with this? Because um, I think mostly it sounds like a good idea, but the starting point for a lot of businesses in particular is, um, well, well, this man will have to pay more rates. They don't like the diary. They don't like paying rates, that's for sure. So the starting point is quite tricky. Um, it's democratic. There is a ballot. Um, if this business improvement district goes ahead, everyone will have to pay for it, even if they don't want it, or even if they're indifferent about it. Um, so the ballot is held by, or is commissioned by the local council. Uh, it's the same organisation that runs local and general elections. Um, they hold a ballot, and it's done by post. People have a month to return those ballot papers, and then if they 51% vote yes, then 100% of all the businesses in the given area will have to pay into that kitty. Um, and after five years, there's another ballot, and five years again, and again, and again. Um, for my money, the reason why I think um, bids are a very, very good way of organising high streets and town centres is, and it's proven. In um, Canada, where this concept was invented nearly 50 years ago, we've only had this legislation in this country for a bit over 10 years. Um, there's plenty of evidence to show that after five years, 95% of business improvement districts choose to renew. After 10 years again, and again, and again, I think a 95% approval rating is a pretty good approval rating for any way of organising yourself. And so a final word, I touched on this at, at the beginning. Um, that image there is a, is a, a shot of a, a barcode scanner, courtesy of, of those nice people at Amazon, which I'm sure we all use, I do as well myself sometimes, but I think they're now taking things to the extreme. Um, I think if you are from a town centre that doesn't have a, uh, a business improvement district or some sort of funding stream, and as far as I can see, there's no other way of getting a reliable funding stream, um, you, uh, you've got to get on and do this, because um, you've got to improve the experience that is your high street or shopping centre or town centre. Um, it's probably not good enough and things are going to get much, much more scary over the next uh, 10 or 20 years. So it's all about the experience. And to improve that experience, you've got to have a little bit of money and a little bit of organisation. It's probably a business improvement.